Let us move to another incident that occurred at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was a woman known as Khawlah binti Thalabah radiyallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala anha. She was married to a man known as Aus ibn al-Samit radiyallahu anhu, the brother of Ubadat ibn al-Samit radiyallahu anhu. What had happened to this woman? She grew old. And as she grew old, one day she had a little debate, dispute with her husband, who was also quite old. And then he looked at her and he said, you are like my mother. You are like my mother, which means I have no interest in you anymore. After that, he went out. He spent some time with his friends and so on. He came back. Now he wanted to strike a relation with her. He wanted to sleep with her once again. So she refused. She said, no, you said I am like your mother. What, I, what do you mean by this? I am going to go to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every day you are making statements that are hurting me. Now that I am old, I can't bear children anymore. I was young and I spent my youth with you. I grew up with you until I got to this age. All the children I had for you, your children. Now that I'm old, you are passing these comments. You are disinterested. I am going to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this occasion and I am not going to allow you to touch me until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides what should happen here. These statements are too heavy. And this used to happen quite often at the time where some people used to tell their wives that you are just like my mother. What that means is I have no interest in you anymore. That, that, that is the meaning of the statement. It is known as dhihar in the Arabic language. So she went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want to inform you of my situation. I was young, I was beautiful, I got married to Aus ibn Samit. As you know, he is a cousin of mine and he is my husband. Now, after many years, I have had children. Now I can't bear children. And now you see how I look. I'm an old lady. He is disinterested and he passes comments that hurt me on a daily basis. Today he told me, you are like my mother. Then he wanted to come back to touch me. I told him, no, I am going to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I want to complain to Allah on this occasion. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at her and said, Ya Khawla, that is your husband. That is your cousin. Go and make men's with him. He made a statement. It's okay. You don't have to stay away from him for this reason. Never mind. Forgive him. And as she got up, she was satisfied because it was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But she was waiting because she said, Ilallahil mushtaka. I am now complaining to Allah and I am waiting for revelation. Immediately as she got up, Aisha radiallahu anha says, I was in another room, but I heard the Prophet recite verses aloud and I knew revelation came at that moment. Indeed, Allah has heard the lady who has come to you complaining about her husband and Allah has heard what she is complaining about and Allah has heard the discussion that the two of you have had. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing, all knowing, He is all seeing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us elevation. Immediately Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read these verses, the woman was called back. Moments later, she was told, subhanallah, in tears she was, that Allah has, I complained to Allah and verses came down. Allah says, I heard the complaint of this woman. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued to say, الَّذِينَ يُظَاهِرُونَ مِنْكُمْ مِنْ نِسَائِهِمْ مَا هُنَّ أُمَّهَاتِهِمْ إِنْ أُمَّهَاتُهُمْ إِلَّا اللَّائِي وَلَدْنَهُمْ وَإِنَّهُمْ لَيَقُولُونَ مُنْكَرًا مِنَ الْقَوْلِ وَزُورًا Those who make these statements to their wives, they should know that these statements are the most dangerous, detrimental statements, totally rejected and unacceptable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The husbands should be careful of the type of statements they make to their wives, especially at that age after they've lived with you for so many years. Now you are showing disinterest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expressed very clearly in these verses that he rejects this type of statement. 
from anyone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirmed for this woman that she must not let this man touch him until he pays a compensation for having uttered that statement. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. So what was the compensation? The compensation was either to free a slave. It is mentioned in the opening verses of that surah. In fact, it is known as Surah Al-Mujadila, the surah of the woman who came to complain. That is the meaning of Mujadila, the one who came to complain to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he was to free a slave. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told her, O oh, Khawla, your husband must free a slave before he touches you. She said, Ya Rasulullah, Aus ibn Samit, don't you know him? He owns nothing. He doesn't have a slave. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed another part of, this, of the verse. If you cannot free a slave, then you must fast for 60 continuous days without missing one day, then you can go back to her. So she looked at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she was shocked. She said, Ya Rasulullah, he's an old man. He can't fast a single day. He is paying the fidyas. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance. He can't fast one day. How is he going to fast 60 days? Another part of the verse came down, whosoever cannot even fast 60 continuous days must feed 60 poor people. She said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has nothing, he can't even feed anyone. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at her and said, Oh Khawla, I have this amount here, take it, this will feed 30 people. She says, and I have something which I own and I will make sure that I will feed another 30. We will have 60 and then I will let him get back to me. Subhanallah. So the two of them, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Khawla, the two of them solved the problem and this man was told and it is reported that after that he was the best, the best to his wife. He always used to make sure that what he utters was always, always pure and clean. Let me mention Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu one day was moving with an army, his whole army after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's time. He stopped the whole army one day because there was an old lady, very old lady who just made a hand sign to Umar ibn al-Khattab. And he stopped the entire army for a moment. Everyone stopped. He got down from the horse or from the camel he was riding. And he went to speak to this old lady. He smiled at her. He nodded his head. He solved her problem and he let her carry on. She was satisfied and he got back onto his camel or horse. And some of the companions said, Ya Amir al muminin today you stopped the entire army for one lady and you want to listen to what she's got to say. Amir al muminin Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu turned around and he stopped everyone again. And he said, should I inform you who is this lady? She is the lady whom Allah listened to. You are telling me I must not listen to her. She put her hand up like this. I had to stop and listen to what she had to say. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, when she came to complain, her name is Khawla binti Thalaba, radiallahu anha. She came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on one occasion. She didn't even get up and walk a few steps. Jibreel came saying, Allah listened to the entire complaint and here is the answer. I swear she can stop me as many times as she wants. I will stop her. She has a virtue over the others. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. These are the verses of the Quran, the power of the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really and truly grant us change in our lives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad subhanallah وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك